Okay, this is the demonstration tutorial of um, exercise number three in the lecture pneumatics section. Um, if I read the, the problem to you, it goes like this. Using a diverting device, parts are to re be removed from one conveyor track onto another in a linear sequence. By pressing a push button switch, the oscillating piston rod of a cylinder pushes the turntable via a pull in step sequence. The parts are diverted and transported onwards in the opposite direction. By pressing another push button switch, the drive unit is switched off. So the basic function of this circuit is a single cylinder that is activated with a push button that then makes it oscillate. It must go back and forth continuously until you push another button which makes it stop. And this has to be electro-pneumatically controlled. So what components are we going to use for this one? We start with the pneumatics. We need a double acting cylinder and we need a 5-2 way valve that's going to control that. But in this case we're using a double solenoid 5-2 way valve. It's not a spring return. We also need to detect the positioning of the cylinder so that it can automatically go back and forth depending on uh, and, and the cylinder, uh, the circuit detects where the cylinder is depending on what part of the sequence it is. We're going to be using three wire switches in this case, as you can see in our, our, our diagram, and that means we need 24 volts and 0 volts to power the switch, but then we also have a signal connection in the center, which then, when it's activated, switches the, the, um, the switch on. Now, you can't see the, the diagram because it's around this side, but it's an optical sensor. So this is actually shining a, a light beam and when uh, the light beam is reflected back off a surface that is close by, it detects that reflection and switches it. So it's actually an optical sensor. <clears throat> All right, so let's have a look at how do we connect this up. We, we've already connected the pneumatics, so we have our very simple pneumatic circuit. We've got an air supply coming into our 5 2 air valve. And then uh, port 2 is connected to the front of the cylinder, uh, port 4 to the back of the cylinder. So that's very straightforward. Let's look at line 1 of the circuit diagram. We need to take some power to our first switch, our start switch. And we're going to be using these two switches on the board. We're not going to be using the D10 switch. So if we take power from the top, the 24 volt line, we take it to the first switch. <clears throat> From there, we're going to go to the second switch, um, which is our start button. In other words, on the other side of the normally open start switch, we're going to take it to the stop switch, but the stop switch is now wired as a normally closed switch. So we take it to there, and then we connect another wire up onto this side. In other words, when we push the stop button, it's going to break the connection and that will stop the circuit from running. The start button closes the connection, the, uh, the stop button then breaks the connection. Looking at our circuit diagram, from the stop button we wire it through to the first relay K1, which is this one, and we're connected to the coil between A1 and A2. And from there, we have to then close the circuit. Uh, so we take from A2, we take it back down to the zero volt line. So I'll just connect that with a blue wire. <clears throat> right, so our first row in our circuit diagram is then connected. The second row is the latching circuit for the start button so that we don't have to hold the start button all the time. The power will stay on the circuit even when we release it. Uh, we do that by taking power from this 24 volt line to one of the switches, which are normally open. So if we connect between 14 and 11, we will be connecting a normally open switch inside the K1 relay. <clears throat> from there, there's 11. We're going to then connect it to the other side of the push button start switch. Yeah, so push button start switch, power comes in, it goes out there. So therefore we have to connect it here. So in other words, as soon as 
the A1, so the K1 relay is switched on, power bypasses our start button. <clears throat> and we don't need to hold that on anymore. So that is our latching circuit. Moving on to row three in our circuit diagram, we need to take power to K1 again. So I'll just use one of these short uh, connections. All right, so this is just uh, taking that, that power from the zero volt line and then it's connecting it to an, a second switch. All right, so here's our second switch inside the K1 relay. It's also a normally open switch. So I'm connecting between 24 and 21. <clears throat> and that one from 21, that has to be then wired in to, uh, to power the A0 limit switch. Okay, so here's the limit switch, uh, the optical sensor, and we have to power it up. So we're going to take it to 24 volts over there. So that as soon as K1 is switched on, it gets power to this limit switch. We also need to close the circuit from the zero volts of this limit switch back to, uh, or from the, out, the outlet to the zero volt connection. So that will close the circuit. As you can see, it's a three wire sensor. So we've still got a center position, which is the signal. <clears throat> so what does the signal do? If we look at line four in our circuit diagram, the signal wire of A0 is then wired to do to K2. And K2 is the second relay in our box. So let's take it up to K2 and we've got to wire it through to um, A1, between A1 and A2. In other words, we're going to power this relay as soon as that limit switch is activated. Don't forget, for a circuit to work, you always have to have a path back to the zero volts. So I'm going to connect this one for the relay and connect it back to the zero volt line so that you can close the circuit. Otherwise, your circuit is not going to function. Row five. Row five is taking power from the 24 volts and taking it to the K2 relay, a normally open switch. So here's K2. This whole row is K2. Let's choose the first switch here. Right, so I'm going to connect it up to the top of that normally open switch, which is connection number 14. And from the bottom, which is connection number 11, we're going to then connect it up to Y1. Y1 will be the solenoid for the five two-way valve that controls the cylinder. And from the other side of Y1, we just have to close the circuit. We take that back to our zero volt line there with the blue wire. All right, so <clears throat> in other words, Y or K, K2 relay, which is this one here, everything in this row. When that's switched on, we're activating Y1, which is the solenoid that is going to control the valve that then sends the air supply to the back of our cylinder. Okay, line six in our circuit diagram, we have to take power to A1. So from our 24 volt line, we, here's our A1 sensor. I'm going to connect it up to the 24 volt point there. And the other side, I'm going to connect that. That's a little bit long. So let's take from there, zero, back to our zero volt line. So we've got power coming in on 24 volt, and we've got um, the zero volt connect to the other side. Now we need to connect our, our sensor wire. And if we take a red cable we connected up here this is our signal signal wire from 
from um, that is A1 limit switch that is going to go through to K3 so this now we're going to start using a third relay so here's a third relay the coil and all the switches in a row there so I'm going to connect it to A1 to the coil of this relay and then from the other side we're just going to connect that back to back to zero okay blue wire that's going to go connect up with one of these right, so we've closed the circuit so as soon as a1 sensors activated it will send a signal to uh, k3 uh, relay which will then activate k3 all right so the last line in this Circuit diagram is um, row number eight, and that is the, the functioning of K3. So let's take power from the 24 volt line and we take it to K3. Let's choose one of these switches. It's a little busy in there, so let's move across a little bit and use this switch here, 34 to 30, 31. If we wire across that, it will be normally closed. So from there, we've got to go to wire two. All right. So, 31. We take that to wire two. So this is wire two. And from the other side of wire two, we just need to take the power back to the zero volt line. So I've just jumped the cable across because this one is doing the same thing just to shorten the cables right so that is all the electrical connections connected so with the air supply on and the power on if we push our start button this this one here it should oscillate continuously and when i push the start button it should stop that's working all right, so if we look at the, the, um, the relays, we should be able to see them switching on and off. We can see that um, K1 is on all the time, as long as the, cylinder is, the circuit is running, and then it's oscillating between K2 and K3 to control the, um, the solenoids for the cylinder, and the limit switches are switching those relays on and off. Okay, that's the end of the circuit.